What's going on guys? Today we're taking a look at Halo 5's requisitions. I saved up 112,000 points. I think actually a little more, but I can open 11 gold packs. We're doing that right now to see what we can get. I've been saving up for pretty much since launch, maybe a few days after. I've gone from like level 18 to 28 in the process, so I have a lot of packs to open up and I've been eagerly waiting to. But I just want to talk a little bit about the requisition system and how I think it affects the game. A lot of people watch the Angry Joe review of Halo 5, as did I. I'm a big fan of his. And he went on a kind of big rant about this system and microtransactions in this game. And while I agree with him in some ways, I disagree in others. When Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare came out and they had the sticker shop, no one cared, and everyone seemed to think it was an okay system, it made you want to play the game more, and it was implemented well. You didn't actually have to spend money. You could, but you didn't have to. And the requisition system in Halo 5 is pretty much the exact same thing. Honestly, Warzone matches, I don't even use that many requisitions because the game's balanced enough as it is with the starting weapons you get, the battle rifle, assault rifle, or pistol. And yes, well, it helps to have a tank or a bunch of warthogs or ghosts running around the map. You can easily take them out without wrecks or with wrecks. Granted, it's easier with wrecks, but you can do it without wrecks. It just takes teamwork. So I don't, I, I like, I could never tell you if someone on my team has been spending $300 on rec packs just to get 100 gold packs and they have everything. Most of the stuff you're trying to unlock is armor and assassination animations, stances, and emblems. And that can kind of suck having it be stuck in these packs that you have to play a good amount for it usually it takes about four or five war zone matches where you do pretty well to get a gold pack and those matches are about 20 minutes each on average so that's a little bit over an hour and a half just for one gold pack so if you're a completionist and you're trying to collect all the armor it is going to take you a while but then again, that's why you're going to keep playing and that's what's going to keep you hooked. It's not the leveling system in this game. There's no unlocks depending on what level you're at. You get them through rec packs, so actually there are in a way. But it's all through the requisition system. And something that I think people kind of forget is that there's no other paid DLC for this game. So 343 needs to be getting income in one way or another. They're giving maps to everyone for free for the duration of the game. They've said there isn't going to be any paid DLC other than the requisition system. And you can buy the requisition pass, which came with the collector's edition of the game as well if you want, to get premium packs every week. And I'm actually going to open two of those near the end of this once I get through all this other crap that I have to open. But yeah, they're giving all the maps away for free pretty much. So they need to be getting money from somewhere because they're going to support this game for probably a year or two until Halo 6 comes out. And then, I mean, the servers will still be online, but they won't be releasing maps. So I think that's a perfectly fine way to do it. It's not like they snuck it in there or tried to hide it or did anything shady like Payday 2 kind of did where it rebalances the game with some things you can get. If you didn't see the Payday 2 thing, you can look it up. What I do agree with Angry Joe on is uh, it's a very fine line you have to walk with these microtransactions and it could easily go in a bad way. So I'm hoping that 343 knows that they're not out to gouge the Halo fans and that they'll just leave it kind of as is. An optional, unobtrusive way of possibly getting a little extra income for them and maybe a little more gratification for players that just want to unlock more and have some money in their pocket that's burning a hole. But overall, I think it's a good system. It definitely makes you want to keep playing matches when you're getting close to enough to open a gold pack. You really just want to play another match to get it. And then when you get what's in that pack, you usually want to try it out. 
or check it out or you'll just go through the customization screens again and see something else that you kind of want so then you'll keep playing more the leveling system in the game like I said doesn't really have any hook to it it just tells people how much you've played really so I think this is a pretty good way to keep people interested in the game and trying to unlock more content I know it won't be for everyone considering there's so much to unlock and it will take probably over a thousand hours to do it but it keeps things fresh and makes you want to keep playing so what do you guys think of the rec system do you think it ruins the game should we sound the alarms is halo gonna die and end up just being like a mobile game full of microtransactions or do you not have a problem with it and think it's fine for the developers to possibly get a little extra income while they make the free maps for people let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed the video please hit the like button and subscribe for more gameplay and reviews fallout 4 and battlefront are right around the corner i'll definitely have coverage of those thanks again for watching guys and i look forward to seeing you on the next one